cinematic, photography, cinemagraph. Hmm. Hey, welcome. My name is Z, and if you're here for the first time, I love doing tutorials and tips on how I shoot my videos from the gear that I use to the software that I use. So if that's your kind of thing, please do consider checking out my Instagram. And if you love what you see there, hey, please do consider subscribing. If you've been here before, welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a cinemagraph, just a basic one like the one that you saw in the beginning. But of course, once you master this, you can actually, you know, be advanced and go all wild. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do it inside Premiere Pro and how to do it inside Photoshop. Yes, Photoshop does videos as well. Yes. First thing to note is shoot on a tripod. It's very important that your footage is still and that the frame does not move. It's literally in the same place. And then the second thing is make sure that your video actually has moving elements that you are going to freeze so that it actually has that interesting uh, feel. Without further ado, let's jump into Premiere Pro first. Okay, so of course the first step is to import your footage inside Premiere Pro. And for a cinemagraph, you really need the audio. So I usually use this icon to drag just the video only. Uh, if you drag your video from the project window, it'll copy both the video layer and the audio layer, which is something that we don't want. So I'm gonna undo that. And if I play back my video, you'll notice that uh, we've got a couple of moving parts. We've got my fingers, we've got the fan, and at some point I move my face. Of course, this is uh, more of a controlled environment and I was shooting this knowing that I was gonna make a cinemagraph. So uh, I was keeping some of my body parts completely still. This will not always be the case. Uh, sometimes you'll make a cinemagraph out of something that wasn't intentionally shot for a cinemagraph, but uh, these are things to just note. So to make our cinemagraph, like the one that you saw in the beginning, we need to duplicate this layer so that we have two of these stacked on top of each other. And on your Mac, you click down on option and drag this video up. Uh, on Windows, it should be Alt if I'm correct. And now we have two video layers stacked on top of each other. And what we want to do is we want to freeze the one that's at the bottom. So I'm just going to hide this one on top using that uh, I icon and I'm just going to scrub through the timeline just to see where I would want to freeze the frame and I think I'm happy with freezing it here so I just right click on this clip and go to add frame hold and what that will do is it will freeze everything from this point onwards uh, on this clip so as you can see nothing is playing anymore it's pretty much an image it's a still image but before this point, nothing would have changed. It will still be a video, as you can see, it's still playing there. So what we just wanna do, the good thing is it will automatically clip the file and we can just delete that part and extend this so that it starts in the beginning. So as you can see now, this is completely frozen. It's now just an image. And if I unhide the clip on top, we can now see that video uh, because this one is still acting as a video, it's not frozen. And then the next step, we are going to use a mask to isolate just my fingers on this uh, video layer on top so that we only see this part of the video layer and then the rest would be showing the frozen video layer at the bottom. So I'm just gonna hide the bottom layer so that you see how that works. And I'm gonna select the video layer on top and go to effect controls and under opacity, I'm gonna select my Bezier tool and I'm just gonna draw a shape around my uh, hand there. Um, doesn't have to be perfect, but um, it just has to you know, cover the space or cover the area that you want to isolate. So for me, of course, it's my hand, but with your video, it could be whatever you want to isolate. So as soon as I complete this shape, you'll see that it will automatically make what's outside the shape invisible and it will just keep what's inside. And I'm going to just uh, increase my feather so that it blends in with the bottom layer. So when I unhide the bottom layer and uh, play this back, you'll see that we are now just seeing my hand move, but the rest of the image is very still. It's actually not moving. So that's pretty much how you create a cinemagraph inside Premiere Pro. 
So now let's jump into Photoshop and I'll show you how to do it there. Okay, so to get started in Photoshop, you just find your footage and you click and drag it into Photoshop to create a new window. And what mine does is actually it automatically gives me this timeline panel. But if you don't see it um, on your Photoshop, don't worry, just go to window and find uh, your timeline option and make sure that it's checked and it should give you this panel. And believe it or not, uh, Photoshop has the ability to actually play back a video as you can see whilst I scrub through this timeline, but you can already see that it's also not smooth because it uh, is not necessarily built primarily to make videos. If your computer is not that powerful, uh, you can go to this uh, setting icon and just make sure that the resolution is set to 25% uh, for better results. But this pretty much works similar to Premiere Pro. We just need to duplicate uh, this layer and uh, make sure that one of the layers is frozen. And then we make sure that we isolate just by hands on the moving layer. So what we're gonna do, uh, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you might be actually uh, happy because now you can make use of your Photoshop uh, skills. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screenshot of the part that I'd want to use as the uh, frozen layer. So uh, if you're using Mac, you just uh, scroll to uh, that particular part that you want, and then you hold down Shift Option Command E, and that will uh, pretty much create a screenshot layer and give you another layer on top. So as you can see, this uh, layer is pretty much frozen. And I'm just gonna drag it to start in the beginning and drag it out again to end at the same time the video ends. So uh, if I scrub through now, you'll see that this is pretty much a frozen layer. It's a screenshot, in other words. Uh, but I'm just gonna move the frozen layer below the video so that we have the video on top, the moving video on top, just like we had in Premiere Pro. And as you can see now, we can see the video again. And now we're gonna add our layer mask inside uh, Photoshop. And this is pretty easy. You just make sure that you're, uh, you've selected your video group layer, and then you go to your add layer mask icon, and it's gonna give you this white box. And if you're not familiar with Photoshop or you're not familiar with uh, masks in inside uh, Photoshop, what this pretty much means is if it's all white, it means um, it's showing everything on this frame. Uh, but if it's all black, if we invert this, uh, I'm just gonna click invert here. Uh, it means that it's not showing anything um, that's in this layer. So I'm just gonna hide this uh, uh, layer uh, that's at the bottom so that you can see. So if I invert this back to white, you see that you're seeing everything. Uh, but if I make it black, then you don't see anything. So what we wanna do is we want to keep it inverted like this. And then we're just gonna unhide this layer so that we can see where my hands were. And then make sure that you clicked uh, inside this black box. And then you choose your brush tool and make sure that your brush color is white because remember, if it's white, then you can see it. If it's black, you can't. So we want to reintroduce just this part of my hand uh, on this particular layer. So make sure your opacity is 100% and make sure your flow is 100% as well. And then you can just right click anywhere and also make sure that the hardness of your brush is set to 0% because this will help with uh, feathering as well so that it doesn't have harsh edges, but that it has soft edges. Now uh, I'm just gonna just draw on top of this uh, hand of mine. I am going to, um, I'm going to hide the layer at the bottom just so that we see what's going on down there. So as you can see, it's uh, pretty much just revealing the past that I am drawing. So again, uh, I could pretty much invert the brush uh, to black. Uh, and if I start drawing, uh, it will have a reverse effect where it starts to make things disappear. So uh, if we make it white, it makes things appear. So I'm just gonna draw this here and leave it here. And now I'm gonna unhide the bottom layer so that we can scrub through again. And now you can see my hand moving, but the rest of the video is actually completely still. So uh, I'm just gonna attempt to play it back and hopefully my computer does well. Yeah, it's, it's doing well, it's dropping a few frames here and there, but if your computer is not as powerful, then editing this um, inside Photoshop 
might be really demanding on your RAM and your graphics card. And once you're done with this, you can go to these four bars and go to render video and you can set, select your settings and whatever. And once you're done, you just click on render and that's pretty much it. And there you have it. Wasn't that easy? Like, I mean, you can do it, right? Let me know down in the comments below if this was helpful. And I hope you're gonna be creating something after having watched this, whether you're doing it in Photoshop or inside Premiere Pro, whichever is your uh, strongest link. Uh, otherwise, leave a like, subscribe, and uh, until next time. Yeah. <laughs>